right. <laughs> Kathy Cruz is an inspiration. When she was 22, tragedy changed her life. Instead of giving into despair, Kathy has fought back. She is now a well-known seamstress. Kathy has the ability to sew and crochet just about anything she puts her mind to. Her imagination and sensitive touch play a big part in her creations. When we return, you'll see expressions through the eyes of a special seamstress. <laughs> Our guest today is Kathy Cruz. Kathy, thank you for being on the program today. And you are a seamstress, right? Uh, yes. And you have been doing this quite a while. How long have you been uh, crocheting and sewing? Okay, I started crocheting uh, when I was six years old. Uh, my aunt taught me to make a chain. My and uh, I actually made my first item when I was uh, eight. And it was made from a old ravel sweater, and I took it apart oh. and made up my own pattern and uh, wow. made it for a, a bed jacket for a teacher. And uh, the uh, beautiful shirt you have, you made this. Yes, uh huh. Oh, it's, it's knitted. Gorgeous. Uh huh. Wow. And I started knitting when I was 12, um, and I started sewing when uh, I was in the fifth grade. I started making my own clothes. Actually, I made doll clothes before that but I don't remember what age I started. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think doll clothes would be harder than, than adult or human yeah, they, clothes. They're they so really small. are, they're so tiny. Wow, and uh, we have a lot of your beautiful work here on the table. First of all, let's talk about this beautiful Christmas afghan that you made. This is gorgeous. Yes, this was a, a, a kit that I got and uh, I made this up and it gave me some ideas for some other things that I made. Uh, the kitchen towels. Mm -hmm. Let's and, put this uh, down. We'll grab the kitchen towels. Yes, I got the idea with the flowers. I thought, well, that would make a pretty, a pretty uh, tea towel. So I did it in the different colors mm -hmm. and, uh, and added the top thing here to uh, put over your uh, refrigerator knob and your, your stove handle. And this one and right here looks like a sunflower. Yes, this, this is the same pattern. And uh, I got the basic pattern from that afghan in the octagon shaped, and then it just kind of traveled to different designs. We have a pillow here that you made. Yes, oh, this, wow. this also came from the idea that I got from the grapes there, and I thought, well, if I enlarge this and put this on a pillow with a lacy ruffle, that that would make a really nice pillow, since grapes are really in now. Mm -hmm. so. How long does it take you to do this? To I made this pillow actually in two days. My goodness. TV time. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. So probably about four hours I could make this pillow. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's so soft. I love it. One more afghan that we have here, and there's a story behind this one, right? Yes. This was, um, I got the pattern as a Christmas gift, and this is a scripture uh, afghan, and each square has a scripture that goes with it. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was fun making because you could kind of dwell on the scripture, although I can't quote any of them right now. <laughs> <laughs> but it is a nice story behind yeah. it, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And you have not only afghans and pillows here, but you have characters. And yes. one in particular has a very cute story, and it's the bear with the uh, vest on. Tell us the story behind yes. that. Um, a friend of mine uh, is a road construction worker, and uh, he was always talking about it, so I decided to make this bear for him, and this is his mascot for his company. So he, <laughs> he holds it around in his pickup. <laughs> and uh, speaking of of characters and stuff. We, you do have another character that we're going to see here later on, and uh, you make angels, is that yes, right? Yes. And I guess maybe Raggedy Andy's, is that yes, right? Yes. Uh -huh. And we're going to see some of that work? Yes. yes. Oh, yes. good. But before we do that, we're going to see some of your sewing, because you do sew some gorgeous clothes. Okay. So we're going to head over here in a minute. Okay. And uh, if you're wondering why I'm taking her hand and leading her over here, you may not have noticed, but Kathy is blind, and everything you've been seeing here is Made from her, handmade, of course, and she is blind, and you do some beautiful work. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Let's take a look at your clothes here. Oh, wow. Look at this. Now, this first one is off-white. Is this a jacket, I guess? Yes, this is a jacket, just a light jacket. Uh, 
I wanted something just light but dressier than a sweater. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I kind of made up this pattern. Oh, wow. And this is like a, a jumper dress. It's like a army green type? Yes, uh-huh. And there's kind of a story behind this, too, because when I made this, the pattern actually uh, pulled across the back. So I, I cut in deeper to make it look like a jumper, and uh, I added the, the, uh, the bias here and everything. So uh, it, it just fit better without the sleeves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you did a beautiful job. I, I just can't believe this. I can't, believe, I, can, I can't do all this. There's no way. Now, white vest with some lace. Oh, mm -hmm. it's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. yes, Very yeah. delicate looking. I got this idea at Walmart. <laughs> you did? <laughs> now, tell me, how, how, do you, how do you get your ideas? Because most people see a pattern and get their idea from that. Do you, you actually have to feel the pattern? Can you visualize uh, it in your head? Usually I can visualize it if I feel the pieces, mm -hmm. uh, or a lot of times I will go and look at things in the stores and come back and take my basic pieces and adjust them to, uh, to look like that particular item. This one is a, a navy blue jacket, uh -huh. and you do have some interesting work on this, don't you? Uh, yes. I kind of wanted something different on this, so uh, I have a serger, and I did these uh, front pleats here mm -hmm. with the serger, and then in the back where it has the you know the, the little pleats, so pleats and then the uh, the serger kind of is a um, a rolled hem. And you put so some elastic in it, a little up. bit more uh -huh. fitted type yes. look. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's gorgeous. And once again, the vest, you have a like a denim type looking vest with lace yes. and yes. the pleats also. Um, I wanted something a little dressier, so uh, I used the same idea on the front here with the pleat mm -hmm. and did it in a white trim and to match, kind of tie the lace in. Oh, and look at this, this final piece. Oh, what a beautiful green dress. And some floral for the uh, sleeves of it? Yes, uh-huh, uh-huh. This was uh, uh, just a, a, a plain dress, sleeveless dress uh, that I had made. And I thought, well, I needed a little more color with it. So I just cut the sleeves in deeper and, uh, and added this. And it kind of looks like a jumper with a blouse under it. Kathy, you do some beautiful work. I, I couldn't do this and I can see. How does a person adapt to do this? Well, I have to uh, modify uh, several things in order to do it. You have uh, lots of secrets and tricks that you're gonna show us? Yes. Okay, when we come back, Kathy's gonna show us the secrets to sewing. Kathy, before we get started on uh, your sewing, let's talk a little bit about uh, your blindness. Now, how long have you been blind? Uh, for 13 years. For 13 years, mm -hmm. my goodness. And what happened? What caused the blindness? Uh, glaucoma. Okay. Now, let's talk about the secrets here, your secrets of, uh, of sewing. Now, what are we going to make right now? Uh, this is a bodice to a dress. Okay. All right. And the first, you have your pattern. Uh-huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, was this your pattern here? Or? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. And I noticed the braille on it. Uh, so. Yes. Uh, this is a pattern that I got from my sister. And so I put Sherry's dress on there. That way I know what dress I'm talking about. Okay. And that's I, a good thing. You've yes, named it. Yes. Uh -huh. And I just about wore this pattern out. So I had to have new pieces made out of some heavier paper. The first, the first piece I want to place on a fold because this is the back. Mm -hmm. And uh, I could tell by feeling what I've got here. So, and I use my um, safety pins. They're easier for me to find if I drop them. Oh, you don't fasten the, the safety no, pin, okay. No, I use them about the same as you would a straight pin. I use my fingers to kind of line up. Okay. And uh, this dress actually is going to be the bodice to a dress jumper. Oh. And um, I want to make the sides a little larger for a real loose fit. Mm -hmm. So I have a, a ruler here, it's a seam gauge, and I have little nick scratches in every fourth inch. Oh. And uh, I can feel those with my fingernail. Two, three, five, six, seven, eight. And I want to make this about two inches bigger. And I'm going to put a pin at the end of this. It just has to be approximate uh, two inches bigger. Oh, okay. And these pins will help me guide as I cut to get it the exact measurement that I need. Now, my pieces 
I cut just a tad bigger than my pattern piece because I don't want to get so close that I trim it. Right. Because then I would, you know, lose my shape on the next time I wanted to cut something. And I run my fingernails along the edge here. So you use your fingers as your guide? Yes, along. I do. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, and it helps when my fingernails are out just a little bit more to tell what I'm doing. Don't we all want our fingernails to grow? Huh? <laughs> oh, yes. And then after I get it cut out, I can always go back and check and see if there's anything that I need to trim up further. Now this is where I'm going to go a little bigger, and I'm just going to go straight out to this pin. And I'm going to use my pen as a guide with my scissors. And I use my hand. Oh, I see what you're doing. Okay. Mm hmm Then I can just pull this up here, turn this around, and trim off my bottom of my bodice here. And when I have a piece kind of like this and I want to cut this across to a particular line, I'll fold mm. and until I get over to my pattern piece. Makes it just a little bit tougher to cut though, doesn't it? Yeah, until I get over to my pattern and then I can go back to my pattern, but I get a straighter line that way. And. Uh, There we go. There we go. And uh, if you see, it's just uh, it's just a tad bigger. But see, I take that up in my seam allowance. Right. So are we ready to sew? Yes, we are. Good. Kathy, I see now we're in your bedroom. This is where you do all your sewing. Mm -hmm. And it's beautifully decorated in peach. Of course, your whole house is in peach, yes. isn't it? Why is it so important to you to have everything color coordinated? Oh, uh, well, colors are important to me. I could see one time, mm -hmm. so I do have a vivid vision of my colors. And uh, I used to have strawberries in my kitchen, but uh, when I started bringing more peach in, I knew that would clash. <laughs> <laughs> now tell me, uh, we're getting to work on it. Is this a serger? A serger. Uh -huh. Okay. And why is it so different then? What I like about the serger is it gives you a factory finish okay. in your seams. And uh, this one has four spools, which I do have to have help threading. Uh, it takes tweezers and everything, and I just don't think I could do that. But I have a good friend that will do that for me. And uh, I love the serger because it trims as it sews and therefore I don't have to trim my seams. It kind of speeds up the job. Now this is trimming as it, as it goes down and I have to kind of watch and make sure I don't uh, get my pins in in my with my blades that right. it that cuts off as it goes. And once again the pins guide you, right? Yes, and it kind of keeps everything in place and, and it um, I still use my safety pins. I very rarely uh, use straight pins. And I do have to be careful. I guide along this edge here and I have to be careful and keep my finger back so the blade doesn't cut my finger off. So and see that makes yeah. a beautiful finished oh, edge yeah. here and uh, it just makes your garments fit so much nicer. So wh what's our next step then? Okay, I'm working on the yoke to this dress and uh, I'm going to do the side, the uh, shoulder seams. Okay, so you come over to the sewing machine then? Yes. All right. Now I want to hold my thread so I don't lose it. Put it on the back stitch. sew just right along the edge there. And I use my fingers to guide. <clears throat> and I have everything placed under my sh machine so that I know right where it's at. And uh, this is the shoulder seam here to the... Oh, yeah, okay. 
Okay, Kathy, what are we going to do now? Uh, I'm going to machine stitch this hem into this skirt. Right. And uh, I want to start right at the edge, the closest to the edge I can. So I measured from my needle to the front of my foot, okay. and that's a half inch. So I'm, I want to measure like a half inch, and that's where I'm going to put the front of my foot. And then I'll lower my needle to see how close I am to that and feel down there. And uh, then I can start. So you want to keep it as close to the edge as possible, right? Yes, uh-huh. And uh, I'm using the edge of my hem to feel as it rolls uh, underneath and then underneath the foot. And I want it just a little bit to the left of this center nick in this foot. So I'm going right along here and uh, I want to stay as close to the edge as I can. And, uh, I sew along here looking for the pins as I go and uh, I have to take those out as I go. And, um, and that's part of your guide, isn't it? Uh, yes, uh-huh. It holds everything in place as I go along. And uh, I want to take it to the very end and uh, back stitch so that... Uh, and I feel underneath and I've got about one more stitch to go and then I can back stitch. I have to feel of my needle a lot to see where I'm at. And uh, cut the thread. I always cut it like that because if I uh, cut it like with a ni knife type position, because mm -hmm. if I cut with my scissors, I'm liable to cut my fabric. And that okay. finishes that hem. What I want to do is I want to top stitch this elastic in here, like your button clothing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have a, a dowel rod that I'm going to put on my machine to help me guide and, and keep it going just the right distance. So you need to make sure that the uh, the edge of your fabric is right on, next to the dowel rod. Yes. Then, right? uh -huh. Okay. Uh huh. And I need to start at just the end of the elastic where I put this in here. So um, I need to get that needle just perfect in there. And I'll back that up just a little bit. Okay. Okay. I'll back packed it. Oh, okay, you're stretching it. And I will stretch this as I sew it. And I'm a pocket here I don't want to catch. There we go. And now you can see how this gives this a kind of a factory look. Oh, and I'll yeah. go and put another, I'll move my dowel rod over mm -hmm. about a three-eighths of an inch and I will make another stitching along there. When we come back, you have a beautiful angel here. Uh-huh. And uh, this is your work, right? This yes, is, uh, yes. I guess, your pattern, personal yes, pattern? Uh-huh. Okay, when we come back, Kathy is going to show us how to make one of these. Okay, Kathy, before we start on the angel, I know you have uh, some dolls back here. This large, beautiful doll. This is this is how you got the idea for the angel, is that right? Uh, yes. I originally started out, I wanted to make a crocheted Raggedy Ann doll. And as I proceeded with that, I decided to give them more detail and to change my whole idea to a, a doll that looks close to the Precious Moments dolls. Which is the next one. Right? Uh-huh. Okay. And uh, I started with the large one, and then I decided to make a smaller one. And then that gave me an idea, since angels were so popular, <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to make an angel. And uh, this whole pattern was made up of my own. And as I started on the head, uh, I was going to give it just a flat face, and I decided to go with the uh, the nose and then the puffy cheeks to kind of give it form. Well, let's get started crocheting then. What are okay. you working on here? I'm uh, I'm working on a leg now, and I have um, I have worked up to the knee joint, mm -hmm. and I go up so far, and then I crochet the leg together, and uh, then I start separating it into another tube, and this will form the knee to where it gives it that raggedy and feel and it can bend kind of and... Floppy. Yes, yeah, floppy. Okay. You sure crochet awful fast. <laughs> <laughs> and I do all of this by feel. I can feel each stitch 
uh, as I go. And now I usually do this while I'm watching TV. And if I get into a real interesting movie, I can really go fast. <laughs> I bet you can. <laughs> <sighs> so uh, now what I'd like to show you is um, how I uh, put the doll together. Okay. And uh, I can stop this at this point. Okay. You already have your legs and, here. Uh, so. Uh huh. And. Uh, what I need to do here is um, crochet the bottom of the torso up. I want to stitch this across because when I go to crochet the legs on, I want the doll to still have that floppy feel. And I want her legs to flop from the body and then at the knees. So you're going to sew up this opening right here? Yes, I'm going to sew this up. Okay, now I will turn this and I'll be ready to um, attach my legs. Okay. And uh, to keep track of where I'm at, I put my uh, pin where the big toe would be. Okay. Because when, <laughs> uh, when I put this on the doll, uh, I want my big toe to be in the right place. <laughs> so, it's amazing how picky you are. I mean, you really <laughs> want it to look human-like. Yes. Yeah, so, um, so we're ready to attach these, the leg here. So you're just, you're taking the, the top layers that you've already stitched and then putting those together? Is that how yes, you're doing it? Yes, okay. uh -huh. And uh, this will go across here. A little bit harder to work with, isn't it? Yeah, when you start putting the doll together, it's a little more bundlesome, and uh, especially working with the stuffed parts. Okay, let's see. And the more pieces you add to it, the uh, a little bit harder it is to hang on to it when you're crocheting. So, you know, Kathy, one thing: anyone that's disabled or you know is blind or whatever, someone I think tends to feel the need to try and help them at a certain point. Uh -huh. But you're just kind of just going with the flow. <laughs> I mean, before I can even reach down to help you, you've already got it and started. Well. Uh, uh, I try to visualize everything that I do, and that sure helps me uh, to do that. And uh, I don't think I would have known that you were blind. <laughs> really Most don't. people don't. Most people don't. And this last stitch I'm going to get in here, and uh, then I will pull the thread through. And. Look. We've got we've got the legs on here, and uh, what we're ready for now is to put the arms on. I got to make sure we get the right arm on the right side. <laughs> I want the thumb faced forward. I'm going to run my hook in here, and um, I measure down from the shoulder, right here, and then I just kind of gather in to the side of the body, and. Uh, and stitch the same as I did on the legs. Okay. I go and eat each stitch along here is I think crocheting them on gives them a little bit uh, floppier tendency and uh, this is what children love. Okay, Kathy, are we done with this doll? Doesn't it need clothes or something? Yes, it needs, <laughs> it needs clothes, and uh, it also needs a face, and it needs its hair completed. And what are we going to do now to it? Okay, I'm going to show you how uh, I put the hair on, and also how I have outlined my border of my hairline with tape. And this guides me so that I can get kind of a straight row. And uh, once I get the outline done, then I just start filling in. And we want the doll to be kind of straggly haired. So it doesn't matter if I get the, the strands just a little bit off and not particularly even. Right. Because this is the characteristic of these dolls. And uh, I'm, I'm going along this, uh, this t piece of tape here uh, for my outline of, of the hair. And then when I go to make the bangs, I will uh, cut these strands in half and uh, go along the front where the bangs would go. 
Uh, so that just kind of outlined the forehead then, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh huh. And once again, trying to make it as realistic as possible. Uh huh. Mm hmm. The eyes are crocheted, and then the mouth is put on, kind of like embroidery. And uh, I I have to get help from friends with this, and I tell them where I want the eyes, and then they'll pin them on, and then I'll fill, and then I'll say, yeah, that's where I want it. So because I don't want any cross-eyed babies. Yeah. <laughs> So you don't need much help, though. Not much, uh -uh, just with a few of the details uh, on the, the facial features. So, and, and I'll go all the way around with this, uh, with this hairline, and then I'll start filling in. Well, it looks like you're making a beautiful angel. So, and I do have the wings uh, ready to uh, uh, crochet around, and then I'll attach those on when the doll is completely finished. And a dress. And a dress, <laughs> yes. <laughs> we don't want a naked angel here. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kathy, you do some beautiful work here. Yeah, thank it's you. It's just a pleasure having you on the program today. You are truly an incredible person. Thank you so much. We hope you've enjoyed uh, this show of Kathy doing her seamstress work and her crocheting. She does a beautiful job. Thank you for watching Expressions, and we'll see you next week.